Hello, I thought uh, since it's Friday, I should actually do uh, a Friday video and today is the first one. So I wanted to call it the, the business of geospatial. The reason for doing this video, and I'm thinking about doing it once a week, is really to talk about some of the conversations and some of the thoughts that I have each week. I spend a lot of my week talking to fascinating people in the geospatial world. Um, and I feel like it's a good opportunity maybe at the end of the week just to pull together some thoughts that are fresh in my mind. So, uh, so welcome to Geospatial, the business of Geospatial on Friday. So let's move through. I think the first one I'll do today um, is just to talk about the expanding geospatial market. So let's just take a quick look at where we are at the moment. And I've, I've done other videos talking about this, but let's just succinctly talk, talk about the business side of things. So I think we've got... Uh, an existing geospatial world, which which some of us have been calling geospatial 1.0, dominated by GIS. I mean, there are some very big business trends going on in that space. The big software providers in the GIS space are now talking about moving GIS out of the mapping department to spread its value across an organization. Um, that's a big trend that we're seeing a lot more conversation around. It's moving away from talking to the GIS crowd about what they understand and more talking about value and talking up sort of the food chain, if you like, to some of the C-level um, executives, some of those bigger decision makers. So that's one particular trend. I think also there's a lot of service providers in that world, um, those that leverage existing technologies and build on top of that. Again, they are very much service providers, but we're, we're noting a trend where um, there's been consolidation in that sector. GIS Inc., um, it was announced earlier this week have been uh, have been acquired. There are others. There are many other examples of these of private equity companies coming in and and purchasing these these guys. Um, the two the two things there I think is is very much a GovTech play. I think in a lot of cases it's it's building up on GovTech um, and leveraging those companies that are very well connected in those universities. I also think we'll see a trend where service companies start providing solutions. So SaaS models and, and real focused solutions. So I think there's going to be a movement away from pure service models into that solution space. So that's that's the, the 1.0 world. I've spoken and written at length about the 2.0 world. Really, the 2.0 world is 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 somewhat different from 1.0, but really not a replacement of it. It's really focused around the new source of data that we've got from satellites down to IoT, etc. So we've got easier ways to collect lots of data. We've also got the ability to, to process that data quickly with machine learning and AI. So we can make quicker decisions leveraging location-based data in that world. It's kind of a wild west at the moment, just spatial 2.0. I liken it to the early days of the internet. Um, You'll hear a lot about different areas which I would characterize as the focus points of geospatial 2.0. There's sustainability, there's global warming, there's ESG, there's space, there's SAR, on and on and on. You'll, you'll hear a lot of talk about these, these new up and coming startups in the 2.0 space. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity in that space. I think there's a lot of Wild West-ish um, in that space. I think a lot of folks are driven by technology there. Um, I would also say like the early days of the internet, there's a lot more technology and, and, and companies in that space and not so many buyers. So there's a real challenge there for those guys to bring their technology um, and, and find those buyers that have those very focused problems. Um, I actually think, and it was an interesting conversation I had today around this, that a lot of folks are going after the more complicated problems here. There are, there's a lot of low hanging fruit that we can leverage location data and AI to actually solve in, in the non-sexy world. Um, and if you're interested in that conversation, please reach back to me because um, I think that's a very um, relevant and valid conversation at the moment. So the third one, let me get my PowerPoint here, is uh, oops, uh, are the data companies. And these are recent conversations I've had in the last two weeks with the likes of Facebook, who have just bought a Mapillary, a Snapchat, um, who have just be, bought Street Cred. Again, there's a there's a there's a movement there by these. And when I say data companies, I mean if you look at Facebook, if you look at Google, if you th these big companies are all collecting lots and lots of data, it's incredibly valuable data. 
What they're looking at now is what do they do with that data? I mean, beyond their existing business models, how do they grow uh, and leverage that data more effectively to solve problems? So in each of those big companies, they're building their own units, which are, um, I, I almost think of the 3M model, if you've ever heard about 3M. 3M kind of encouraged a more innovative uh, approach to, uh, to work within those companies. So they encourage folks to be, to come up with ideas and they would help fund them, etc. I'm not going to compare these big companies with 3M, but the model's similar. I think they're building their own environments internally to explore what they can do. And, and I think there's some amazing things going to come out of those places. So, um, so I, I mean, there's three areas, I think, which have been very relevant to conversations I've had over the last little while. And, and it's interesting how the market's breaking down uh, between these different groups. Um, I mean, great things are happening but we're at a very early stage of change. So uh, there is to your first Friday talk. Thanks for watching.